So what's your favourite band? Yours? <laughs> Is that a trick question? No, no, honestly, what's your favourite band? I don't really have one. Mine's 40 metres. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> That's awful. We've got a dog barking in the background. Not ideal. So a lock gate lasts for about 15 years, needs to be replaced. And that one up there is a classic that it's in its last year or so. They're made of oak and they're made in a workshop near Oxford apparently. So what's that noise in the background? The wind. No. <laughs> you listen. The water. Yes. So, okay, who are you? I'm Emily. Call sign. Mike Six, Echo Lima Mike. <laughs> <laughs> and how proud of you are you to be an amateur radio operator? Well, it's not on my CV. <laughs> <laughs> now, we had a radio on the boat as well. So we had a narrow boat, and a narrow, an English narrow boat, I'll show you some pictures in a minute, um, is a very narrow boat. <laughs> so they call it a narrow boat. It's very long. Some people call them long boats, but that was... It really the, annoys me when people call yeah, them long boats. The Vikings had long boats, we have narrow boats. I think the viewers back home might be interested in how a lock works. So we're 200 yards away from a lock and we're going down and the lock is empty. Lock is empty. Exactly, what would happen? You'd go, lock, lock, lock! So and you're all inside watching the telly. We'd be like, damn, it's at the good bit of short of the dead. <laughs> so you would hear lock, lock, lock on the yeah. radio, would you? Oh, for God's sake. Find our way to the lock, fill it up by using a windla, windlass. Windlass, windlass. Yeah. Then what happens? And then when it's reached the top, you have to put the, windla the thing back down. We open the lock gates. Very easily manoeuvre your way in. Shut the Shut gates. Shut the gates. The other side, you then have to empty it again and the water comes back out. Pours out. Yeah. Mm. And then we go lower. Go yeah, glug, 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 glug when we're at the same level put the, the thing back down hopefully emily has inspired you <laughs> and they didn't have engines in 1729 they had horses you see so the horses would come up and down now there's a boat coming down here and this lock happens to be already set but in fact we need a windlass which we don't have because it's in the shop um because it needs a little bit more water in it look What's your name, sir? Uh, Clive. And we used to come down here and there was no one like you, Clive, around. When it was just British waterways or something, has that all changed now? No, they, I think they've always had lock keepers, but now they're volunteers. Well, maybe I should volunteer. Well. Do I have time to volunteer as a lock keeper? No. I want you to describe a stereotypical amateur radio operator in as much grotesque detail as you feel prefer. feel mean. You feel mean. <laughs> How long... Are, ago did you take your exam? I don't know. How old were you? Probably about 13, 14, I don't know. Do you remember the exam? 
Yes. Do you remember any of the questions on the exam? No. I remember I passed by, if I've got one more question wrong, I would have failed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Do you remember what Ohm's law is? In amateur radio terms, what is a bar of soap? <laughs> Something we wash ourselves with. <laughs> <laughs> now, some girls get into amateur radio operations because they sort of copy dad and, you know, it's dad time. So why did you become licensed? Because you made me. <laughs> did I really make you or did it? No. Did um, I kind of wanted to because I thought it'd be quite cool to have. Okay. Um, Do you tell people? Sometimes. It does impress people. Mm -hmm. And I test people on the phonetic alphabet and they get really impressed that I know it. Can you remember the first time you impressed somebody, an adult, with the phonetic alphabet? <laughs> yeah. I was in brownies, so I must have been about eight. And we had a fire engine come to brownies. And I was sat in the driver's seat and a fire engine and all these firefighters and they must have started using the phonetic alphabet and I was like, oh, Sierra. Yeah. And they were like, what? Derek, Derek, you've got to come and listen. This eight-year-old knows the phonetic alphabet. Do you remember, can you remember any sort of aerial at all that has a name? Long ones. Could you describe <laughs> a DX commander? Um, <laughs> a pole. <laughs> <laughs> I get the appeal of competitions. Uh huh. You must get quite a good sense of satisfaction. Yeah. And if you had to tell someone what amateur radio is, how would you describe it? I always really struggle. Right. Because pe people do ask me, and I'm like, oh, people come into the garden and they're like, what the hell are all these aerials in the garden? Yeah. I'm like, oh, dad's things. <laughs> right. And I said, they're aerials, and he, it's amateur radio. And they're like, what's that? And I just say, he just uses it to speak to people all over the world. And they don't, they're like, why? <laughs> okay. Well, that's interesting, because I uh, always wanted to make a film <laughs> called What is Amateur Radio? Mm. Um, and it, it, it can be quite difficult to get it right down. Mm. I would say it's a science-based hobby. Yeah. With a two-way radio communication. But you started off when you were younger, you like, what was it called when you just used to speak to people in cars and stuff? CB. CB. Yeah. So was that, obviously amateur radio still existed back then, but that was like the, what got you into it, I think, really. Yeah. Uh, what got me into it was the fact that I was using a walkie-talkie or RF radio and just talking to other people, and then I realised there was a bigger world out there. Yeah. In fact, what really happened is I keyed a microphone on channel one, mm. uh, and then another guy keyed it. And then I went, oh, are you checking your SWR? And he said, yes, I am. Just uh, setting up the linear here and see if we can get into Europe today. And he was in Texas. And that was like a whole world opened up for me that yeah. actually DX, DX Commander, yeah. long distance contacts were possible on, um, on HF. <laughs> the bottom line is, if you think a 13 year old girl is gonna be interested in amateur radio, either she isn't, or she just loves her dad a lot. Ah. Oh yeah, how many contacts have you had on the radio since you've been licensed? One. <laughs> <laughs> because you made me. <laughs> so, so that's it, a day in the life of um, M6 ELM. Yeah, and Mike Zero, Mike Charlie X-Ray. Um, a very good day. <laughs> <laughs>